In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make an Amazon affiliate website using WordPress and WooCommerce. The site we're gonna be building looks just like this. And I'm gonna take you through absolutely everything step by step from setting up the hosting through to installing WordPress, adding products, and basically ending up with a fantastic looking website. As you can see, I've created a site all around Boots, but you can do it in whichever market you like. The site is really easy to customize, so don't worry too much about the color scheme that I've chosen. You'll be able to use your own logo, your own colors, and whatever else you like. So let's roll the tape. Hello, it's Alex here from WP Eagle. Thanks for watching. So yeah, as I said, we're gonna be creating an Amazon affiliate website today in this video. This video is actually a remake of a previous video I did um, a while back now, over a year, maybe even longer. Um, so I wanted to update the video to use the latest software and basically just go through anything that's changed. Don't worry if you haven't seen the previous video, it's not important. So before I go much further, let me just explain what being an Amazon affiliate is. When you sign up as an Amazon affiliate, you're then able to promote Amazon products and when someone clicks on one of your links and goes through to Amazon and makes a purchase, you earn a commission and that can be up to 10% of the order value. So today the site we're gonna be making allows you to bring down whichever products you like. Uh, it's got a blog so you can add content about the products that you're gonna be sharing. And it's really easy to set up and manage. The great thing about the software we're using today is that it will keep your site up to date. It syncs with Amazon every night to make sure that all the prices, descriptions, and all that other stuff is up to date and correct. Now, before we get started with building the site, I wanna take you through a few important things. First thing you're gonna to wanna to think about is what sort of products you're gonna be promoting on your website. I've got a video on that in terms of how to choose a niche. I will put links to all the things that I talk about in the description below, so be sure to check that out. If you have already chosen a niche and the sort of products you're gonna be promoting, great, let's carry on. The next point I want to stress is that it's not good enough just to create a site and add some products and hope that that's gonna get some traffic and generate some sales. It may do, but to really get a site that's really gonna fly and earn you some good income, you're gonna to need to create some content. Now, when I say content, I'm talking about blog posts, articles, videos, images, uh, basically all sorts of stuff that you can add to your site to add some value around the product. So it might be reviews, it might be top 10 lists of products. Uh, you'll think of some great ideas, but the best affiliate marketing sites are ones that add some good value through the content they produce. Again, please do check out my channel and my Amazon affiliate playlists for videos and ideas on how you can do that. The third thing I wanna talk about is the money. How much money can someone make with an Amazon affiliate website? Well, it really depends on how much time and effort you've got to put into it. I've spoken to lots of my viewers who have created Amazon affiliate websites and some have had great success. I'm talking earning hundreds, if not thousands per month from their site. And I've also spoke to a lot of other people that are just earning you know, 10, 20, 30, $40 per month from their site and they're more than happy with that that kind of pays their beer uh, tab and you know that's enough. A lot of things are gonna affect how much money you're gonna make and that's uh, gonna be down to the niche you choose and how much content you produce and the value of the products you're promoting. I regularly put together some videos on the success stories that I hear about. I've got another one that I'm just currently recording and editing that should be out very, very soon. And again, I will make sure that that's linked to in the description and if not via a card or something so you can find that. But yeah, be sure to check out the channel for the success stories videos to find out the kind of sites other people have made and how much money they're earning, traffic and all that other exciting information that I'm sure that you wanna know. While we're talking about money, let's go through the money that you're gonna to need to invest today to be able to get this site up and running. I'd love to be able to tell you you can set it up for free and that there's not gonna be any investment involved to create a site, but unfortunately that's not the case. However, I have tried to choose some products and services that are great value and don't cost a lot of money. So the only investment you're gonna to need today is gonna to be just a few dollars. And like any business, you know, it does need a little investment just to get it going. So let's go through those numbers now so that we can be clear how much money you're gonna to need to spend today. First thing you're gonna need is a domain name. Now a domain name is a .com, a .net, a .co.uk, a .whatever. Uh, if you've already got one of them, that's great. If you don't already have one of them, then I know that you can pick them up from around $10 a year, something like that, maybe 12, I think with Hostgator. 
So uh, not a huge investment and uh, it does need renewing every year, but for the year, the first year, I say you're not gonna be spending any more than around $12, $13. So that's the first thing you're gonna need and that's the domain name. The next thing you're gonna need is hosting. Now hosting is where your website lives on the internet. Basically you hire a little bit of a, a server space and a company will keep your uh, website up running and make it available to everyone on the internet. So that's obviously quite essential. Now today I'm gonna to be recommending my favorite host, they're called HostGator, and I've got a voucher as well that I can give you to make sure that that cost is not too great. So depending on which package you go for, obviously the price does vary, but I've got a deal today for the first month that will get you the hosting for just a penny. But in general, you're not gonna be looking at any more than around $60, $70 a year. The next thing you're gonna need is the theme, and the theme is basically what gives the website its look and feel. The cost for that is $33. And for that, you get the quality theme, you get support and you get updates. And well, it's an essential theme because that's what I use in this video. Uh, it works really well with the plugin and uh, it's a one-time investment and then you've got it. And the final thing you're gonna need is the plugin and the plugin basically, you install it into WordPress and that then pulls down all your Amazon products, does all your affiliate link tracking and does all the heavy lifting basically to help you set up the site really quickly and easily, as well as manage it on an ongoing basis. As I mentioned, it does the syncing and, and all that sort of stuff to make sure that your website is up to date. And the cost for that plugin is just $42. So I've put up there, hopefully, <laughs> all the things you need. Not a huge amount of money, just a little investment to get this up and running. The main investment you're gonna need is a bit of time um, to obviously learn this stuff and do this stuff. But hopefully once you've uh, put that investment in, you will start to get something back in the way of affiliate commissions. Now, for those of you who've watched my videos before, you'll know that I tend to leave stuff in a video if bits go wrong or stuff doesn't quite go to plan because I found that when you guys are doing your uh, website setups, you'll find that stuff doesn't always go to plan and it doesn't quite work. So I leave a lot of that stuff in the video so that you can see exactly how I fix those problems, my approach to it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I hope you don't mind. I've got had some good feedback that uh, people do like that. So uh, if you find that I'm doing stuff and maybe it's got a little bit haywire, that's because I wanna show you how to fix that. And uh, I hope you enjoy that. That's the way that I edit my videos. Of course, if you do get stuck, I would love to help you out. So if you get any questions or yeah, you get stuck, then please just leave a comment below or send me an email or whatever, Twitter, get in touch with me somehow and I'll do my best to help you out. I will stress though that I do get quite a lot of emails nowadays and comments and I still do try and reply to all of them. So there may be a little bit of a delay on that, but I'll, you know, I'll try and get to your question as quickly as I possibly can. Anyway, I think I've been talking long enough and I think you've been looking at my face long enough. Let's get on the computer and let's get this website set up. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is set up our hosting and, and sort out the domain name and all that sort of thing. So uh, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do today is set up our web hosting. So your web hosting is where your website lives. You basically hire a little bit of a server off a company and they uh, basically make sure your website's always available and they do all the technical side of stuff. All you've gotta do is pay them every month and you'll be fine. My preferred host is HostGator who I'm gonna be recommending today. The reason why I like HostGator, especially for people that are just starting out uh, with a new website, is their pricing. They start at just $3.95 a month. And for that, you get your web hosting, you get a 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee so that you know your website's always gonna be available. You get a 45 day money back guarantee. So if for whatever reason you change your mind and you decide you don't want a website anymore or uh, you don't want to use HostGator anymore for whatever reason, then you can easily get your money back. The technical support is 24 seven, three, six, five. And I found it very good. They have a live chat system, so you can uh, just do it for your computer or you can phone them if you prefer. But yeah, I've, I like the live chat, it works really well. They've always helped me out with any problems that I've had. Not that I've had any, to be fair, most of the time I can just uh, get on, set up my hosting and not need to speak to anyone, which is always good. Now today I've got a voucher for you that you can use with HostGator that's gonna give you a discount. So uh, we're gonna be able to shave some more off the already very low prices. So let's get started and sign up. So I'm gonna go into web hosting up here. Now they offer a number of different hosting packages. You've got your web hosting, your cloud hosting, your WordPress hosting, and all these other bits and bobs. You just need the basic um, web hosting. 
Don't worry about the WordPress hosting, although we are going to be running WordPress. You can actually run WordPress on their standard web hosting just fine. Uh, there's no need to pay extra for the WordPress hosting. In fact, you have more control if you do it on the, uh, the simple web hosting one. So that's what we'll go for. Now within there, they've got three different plans. They've got the hatchling plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. Now, um, depending on what uh, ambitions you've got for your website is gonna determine which of these plans is best for you. Generally, if this is just your first website and you're just kind of dipping your toe in the water, the hatchling plan is gonna be fine for you. It's just the single domain, so that's just one website and everything else that you need. If you're thinking that maybe you're gonna um, create this site and then you're gonna go on to create other sites, then the baby plan or the business plan may be a better choice for you as you can have unlimited domains on those. Um, so yeah, it's a good one if you're gonna have multiple websites. Of course, you can uh, upgrade, downgrade at any point, so don't worry if you, um, you're not 100% sure which one you need. Uh, you can always change your mind later. So let's go for the hatchling plan. I'm gonna click sign up now. So here's the sign up form. And the first question is about the domain name. So a domain name is your .com or your .co.uk, your .net, .org, .whatever. If you already own a domain name, that's fine. Maybe you've already registered one with GoDaddy. If you haven't, this is where you're gonna to need to register a new domain. So um, just start typing uh, whatever you like in there. So I don't know, depend, obviously it depends on the website that you're gonna be creating. Um, you yeah, put some words in there and then, ho and then HostGator will go off and see if the domain is available. Um, let me show you what that looks like. So uh, this is a test domain. And then if I wanted that .com, Uh, unfortunately, that one's unavailable. So I would have to, you know, either change the extension. Dot online is fine, but uh, you know, whatever you like. Dot tech. There's loads of domains, or you could just change the words here. You know, maybe add some letters, country, whatever, and again, it will go off and see that one's available. So yeah, choose the domain you like, and then just you know, make sure all the boxes ticked. You're probably only gonna need the one domain. It's gonna obviously try and sell you all these other domains. Uh, I don't think that's that's necessary in this case. Now, for those of you that already own a domain, you've already registered one previously, as I said, at GoDaddy or Namecheap or something like that, you need to click this tab here, which is the, I already own this domain. And then you need to enter your domain name in here, which is what I'm gonna do because I already own the domain that we're using today, which is bootboutique.com. UK. So that's added. And again, it's gonna try and sell me some other domain names, which I'll leave for now. So let's scroll down. And here we get to choose our package type. So we've already gone for the hatchling, which is fine. Let's just keep it at that. And then we get to choose the billing cycle. Now, when it comes to billing cycle, if you can afford to go for 12 months right now, you will get a great discount. Um, as you can see here, the price goes from 10.95 a month down to 5.95 a month, which is quite a big saving. And if you can afford to you know, commit for even longer, 24 or 36 months, then you get an even better price. Now, obviously you don't know how long you're gonna want your site for. Hopefully, all being well, you'll want it for a good many years. Uh, but obviously, you don't know. Um, what I will say, though, is that you are going to need to site for at least three months because it's going to take you a little while to build the site. And then once the site's built, you're going to need to promote it, add content, all that sort of stuff. And that can take a little bit of time. It also takes a little bit of time for Google to come in and discover your site and to start getting traffic and earning commissions and all that thing. So one month is definitely not going to be enough. Three months, maybe just about six months. Yeah, 12 months, at least, you know, you've got a better price. And I find that it kind of adds a little bit of uh, commitment to you. <laughs> you know, if you pay for 12 months, it means that you'll keep coming back to your site, you'll work on your site, and you'll really put some effort in and make it happen. You know, if you go for one month, then you, you know, you got you haven't really got that commitment and that pressure to kind of work on your site. So it's entirely up to you uh, whether you want to go for one month, three months, six months, or whatever. I would recommend that you go for 12 months because you get a great saving, and I'm going to give you a voucher code in a second, which is going to give you an even better discount. Um, but yeah, it's up to you. So let's select 12 months. 
In here, you'd enter your username and your PIN number, which is uh, the PIN number that you use when you're contacting HostGator for support. Down here, you enter your billing information. I'm not gonna fill in all this form right now because that'll take too long and a bit boring. Uh, I think you can work out your billing info. I'm sure you've filled in a form like this many a time. You can then decide whether you wanna pay with your credit card or with a PayPal account. Section number four is all about additional services, which we don't really need any of these to be fair. So let's just untick that one and untick that one. We could do backups and security with uh, with other things without having to pay HostGator. Do check out my channel for videos on those. Let's scroll down. Um, so yeah, make sure you untick all those things. Here we've got the coupon code, which is a very important box. So in here, if you enter the code Eagle. 30, you'll get 30% off your entire order. Let me just add that that is an affiliate coupon. So if you do use it, I will earn a small commission. Thanks very much for that. Uh, it's a great way of kind of saying thank you for these videos and it really encourages me to keep making more videos, uh, but it's entirely up to you. So um, obviously make sure you click validate. And as you go, you've got to be careful. When you enter these coupon codes, sometimes like it has done just now, it will add the hosting add-ons again, um, which I've just unticked. So let me just go back up and untick it again. You just gotta watch out for that, a little bit sneaky. There we go, so that's our discount all done. And then you wanna go through and tick the box and click check out now. Now for those guys that have decided that they do want to go for just the one month, um, which as I said, I don't really recommend, but if you have decided that money is tight and you're only gonna go for the one month kind of rolling deal, that's fine. I've got a different voucher for you guys. If you go for the code Eagle Penny, and then click validate. Make sure again that it's not added any of these additional services, you naughty form. Uh, you'll see that you get your first month for just one pence, one cents, a penny. <laughs> So you might wanna go for that if you've just gone for the one month. But as I said, generally, uh, go for a longer term, you'll get a much better deal. Um, that's all I've got to say on it, really. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check out now. I'm gonna fill in this form, get my hosting account set up, and then we will get on with installing WordPress and getting our website up and running. Okay, so I completed the form and made my payment, all that sort of things, and it's just setting up my account for me. So what's gonna happen now is you will receive an email from HostGator with all your details that you're gonna to need to be able to log in and start setting some things up. Okay, so I received my email and it didn't take too long. It came through in just a couple of minutes. This is a very important email. It includes all the information that you're gonna to need to access your HostGator account and set up your website. As you can see, it's got a link to the control panel, username, passwords, and other important information. Now, the next step is just for people that already had a domain registered before starting. So I'm talking about you've already got something registered with GoDaddy or Namecheap or Namester or one of those other domain registrars. If you just registered a domain name with HostGator, then you can skip this step. Don't worry, it's only gonna take a couple of minutes. Um, this is just for the guys that already had a domain name, which included myself. So I'm gonna do this right now. I'm gonna go over to GoDaddy, who are my domain registrar, and what I need to do is update the name servers. And this step is pretty much the same across all domain registrars. You just need to log in and go into your domains. So I'm gonna manage my domains here. And then you're looking for the name server or DNS settings. Sometimes it's called um, DNS if it's not called name servers. So here's my domain, Boot Boutique. I'm just gonna click it. And you can see here we've got the name servers and they're currently set to this, which I think is just the uh, the GoDaddy default ones. I'm gonna click manage. And then I'm gonna go for custom and then click enter custom name servers. And then in these two boxes, if we go back to the email, you'll see we've got our name servers right here. So the first one is NS8415. Then I'm just gonna paste that into the first box then for the second box, if we just go back to the email, you'll find the second name server here, NS8416. Your name servers may be different to mine, don't worry about that, just copy and paste them in. I think HostGator will got quite a few different ones. Uh, so don't worry if your numbers don't match up to mine. Then if we press OK, that'll save that. Click Save. 
and we're all done. Now this could take a few moments to update. So don't worry if you go to your domain name, you're gonna go onto your web browser, type in your domain name and you don't see your HostGator. Just give it a little while. Sometimes it can take a couple of hours um, for these changes to be reflected. So yeah, don't panic if you can't see anything. If you can't see anything after 24 hours, then maybe do worry a little bit, but generally it will happen in an hour or two, sometimes only a few minutes, uh, and then we'll be ready to uh, carry on setting up our website. So I'm gonna close GoDaddy now, don't need that. And I'm back to the email, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log into the control panel so that we can get WordPress installed and, and all that sort of stuff. So to access control panel, there's a handy link within the email, just give it a click. And then it's asking for a username and password. Again, these are within the email. Just give it a copy and a paste. And let's copy and paste the password too. Now when you're copying and pasting passwords, make sure that you don't kind of get any extra spaces and stuff. I've seen that a number of times where people, they uh, grab the password maybe a bit like this. You can see there I've selected a bit of space at the beginning. If you paste that in, it's not gonna work. So you've gotta make sure that you've got no spaces, just the letters and the numbers and the squiggles and all the rest of the characters. And don't grab any of the spaces at the front or the back. Let's paste that in here, click log in. Okay, now we're in. You're gonna get a few pop-up ads, you don't need any of them, so let's just click the cross. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the password on this, because that password, I'm never gonna remember that. And plus all you guys have seen it, so I need to change it. So let's just go up the top here, click on my name and go to passwords and security. Gonna paste in the old one which I've already got in my clipboard because I just used it. I type in my new one. Like that. Then I'm just gonna click change your password now. That's done. Close that. Okay, so now we're ready to install WordPress, which is obviously gonna be the platform we're using to create our website today. So let's go up here and click on websites. Again, there's more little pop-ups, don't worry about them, click the cross. Then across the top here, we've got our WordPress installer. So I'm gonna give that a click. Then we can select our domain. There's only the one there, boot boutique. That's perfect. Leave the directory blank and then just click next. In here, we give it a title. Don't worry, you can change this later. And here you can create your admin user. This is what you're gonna be using to log into WordPress. You give yourself a name. And an email address. Then we need to click this little box. Click install now. Now this is gonna take a second, there we go, all done, didn't take very long at all. Uh, it says it's all installed and the username is the one I just entered and here's the password that we're gonna to use to log into WordPress. So let me just copy that into my clipboard. I'm gonna click on this uh, link here, it's gonna take us over to the site. And we've got this page which says website coming soon, which is good. This is the um, the HostGator sort of coming soon WordPress thing, which means everything's working. Um, and the domain name servers and all that sort of business have updated. If you don't see this page, it means that your domain hasn't updated and, and all that sort of stuff. So you just need to wait a bit, a little bit longer. So I'm gonna to go to admin login. The login was WP Eagle. The password I've got in my clipboard, I just copied it. I'm gonna click login. And there we go, you can save your password in your browser if you like. And now we're ready to start setting up our website. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change that password again because I can't remember these funny long passwords. So to do that, I'm gonna go up to here in the top right and go edit my profile. I'm gonna scroll down and go to generate password. Then in here, I'm gonna actually type in a password I can remember. I'm gonna click hide just for now. 
it says it's very weak. It's not particularly weak. <laughs> click confirm use of weak password and click update profile. So this is the password we're using to log into WordPress, which is the one you're gonna be using most of the time. You're probably not gonna to need to go back into the HostGator control panel much going forward. You're just gonna be doing all your work here uh, in terms of the WordPress login. Um, which as you can see, you can access, if you go to your domain slash WP hyphen admin, at any time you better log into this dashboard. Now the next step is actually just a little bit of housekeeping. When you install WordPress uh, with HostGator, they add a few extra plugins, um, which we don't actually need. A plugin is a bit of software that adds extra functionality to your WordPress site. There's loads of them available, a lot of them are free, some of them are paid for. We're gonna be using some today to create our Amazon affiliate website. Um, but as I say, we don't really need the ones that are installed by default, um, so let's go clean them out. So we've got a nice clean install um, where we know all the plugins that we're running and we've got nothing that's gonna surprise us. So I'm just gonna go into plugins and click installed plugins. You see all this stuff, That's this is caused by plugins. So we, we wanna get rid of all these funny messages. So if I scroll down, I'm gonna deactivate the ones that I don't want. So I don't want Jetpack. And, um, and I want you to go away. <laughs> I don't want Mojo Marketplace. And I don't want Optin Monster right now. In fact, the only one I'm gonna keep is Akismet, uh, which is quite useful if you start getting um, blog spam, um, which is basically when people are adding comments to your blog, um, which aren't real, it's kind of handy, but we don't, again, we don't need it right now. But the other ones, I'm just gonna tick these boxes. And I'm gonna go down to bulk actions here and I'm gonna click delete and then apply. And then okay. And then they're all gone. So now we've got a nice clean WordPress installation and I'm ready to go. You may or may not get this message at the top, uh, which is telling me that there is an update available for WordPress, so it's probably a good idea to do that now. The great thing with WordPress is that it does all the updates automatically for you. It's a bit like your computer or your phone. You don't have to mess around doing it yourself. It does it for you. So I'm just gonna click update now. And simple as that, it's all done. So we're now up to date with the latest version of WordPress 2. You'll find all your updates uh, going forward up here. They see this little twisty arrow arrow thing that tells us that we've got updates. A couple of themes here that need updating. Again, we're not gonna be using these, but I'll update them just to clear off those numbers and keep everything nice and tidy. Okay, so if we wanna go and have a look at the website, if we go and click visit site, here it is. I mean, it doesn't look much right now. It's just running the default WordPress blog theme Quite boring, black and white, yawn. So what we need to do is install a new theme and our WooZone plugin to start uh, adding some affiliate products and all that sort of uh, stuff. Now the theme is what gives a WordPress site its look and feel, um, you know, all the colors, layout, styling, all that sort of stuff. So I say we'll add a new theme right now so that we can get the look and feel that we want. So to add a new theme, first of all, we need to go and in, uh, download it. So I'm gonna head over to Theme Forest, which is where um, we're gonna get the theme from. It is a premium theme that we're using today, um, and the reason why I pretty much always use um, premium themes is because they are of a much higher quality than the free themes, and for what we're doing today, I, I don't actually think there's a free theme available. So it's gonna take a small investment to get the theme, but for that you get support, you get updates, and you get a generally a better quality of product than you do if you go for a free one. So the theme we're using today is called Kingdom. I'm just going to type that into the search box and it's the first one that comes up. I'm going to put a link on the screen uh, for you now and a card and all that sort of stuff. So just click on the video um, or you'll find the links in the description below this video. Um, if you use the links, uh, thank you very much. They are an affiliate link so I will earn a small commission if you do purchase the theme via my link. Thank you very much. The cost of the theme is just $33, uh, so not a huge amount of money. I've already purchased it, so I'm gonna download it straight away. I'm just gonna go back here and click download. You'll need to sign up for Theme Forest and you know deposit some money. What I will say is that you get, um, let me just show you actually before I download, with um, Theme Forest, which is part of the Inveto market, 
it's better if you deposit some money rather than just buying straight off because they, they kind of add an extra charge. I don't know why. And what I will say is if you are going to deposit, you might as well deposit enough to cover this and the plugin because we're going to be getting the WooZone plugin from Code Canyon, which is right here. Um, as well, and then we'll part. You can use the the funds across any of these sites. There's uh, audio and graphics and photo Dune and all these sort of stuff. And the cost of the plugin, as I already mentioned at the beginning of this video, um, let me just find it. The cost of the plugin is forty two. So you're going to need to deposit at least. Uh, 42 plus 33 which is 75 so yeah make sure you deposit at least 75 dollars that way you'll have enough to cover the um the plugin and the theme anyway let's go back and download that theme so i'll just go back uh, let me just go back in my browser that'd be easier i'm going to click download i'm just going to click save And that's just going to download now. Okay, so that's downloaded. Let's have a look at it on the computer. So I'm just going to pop up the folder where it's downloaded to. There it is. Now what we need to do is extract this zip file that we just downloaded. Within there, there'll be a folder um, called whatever the version is that you've downloaded. Right now, for me, it's version 2.2.2. But obviously for you guys in the future, it may be a higher number. Within that folder, you'll find some more folders and we're looking for the zipped one. So this one here, theme zipped, as we go in here, you'll see there's a kingdom.zip. And that's what we're gonna be uploading to our website to install our theme. So let's go back to the website and I'm gonna go back to the dashboard. To access the dashboard when you're logged in at any time, you can just click up here, click on dashboard. And then I'm gonna to go to appearance and themes. And then we're going to go to add new. And then upload theme. Uh, then choose a file. And then if we find the folder we're in, there we go, 2.2.2. Then I'm looking for the zipped one, theme zip. There we go. And then kingdom.zip. Click open. Then install now. There we go, that's done. Let's click activate to make the theme live. And there we go. Now, you've got this message at the top popped up saying that we need to install some plugins to make the theme work correctly, so that's fine. So let's click begin installing plugins. There's a whole load there. Um, if you go up to the top and click the very uh, first little square that's going to select all of them and then if we go to the bulk actions select install and apply it's going to install all of those for us in one go there we go and they're all done so now if we return back to the plugin installer they're now showing as installed but not active or activated even so again let's tick the box at the top go to bulk actions and select activate and then apply There we go, they're all done. The following plugins were activated successfully. Perfect. So now if we wanna go and have a little look at the website and see what's happened, what's changed, if we go back up here to visit site. There we go, we can see uh, it's changed. It's starting to look a little bit more like a shop. Obviously there's still plenty of work to do, um, but we're making good progress. So the next step uh, we're gonna do is install the WooZone plugin which is the bit of software that allows us to download all our products from Amazon, it inserts our affiliate links and all that other good stuff. So I'm gonna head over to Code Canyon. Um, then I'll find the page, it's Amazon Affiliate Plugin. There it is, I'm gonna put a link up on the screen now and a card for you guys. Again, it's a affiliate link, so thank you very much if you use it. Hopefully you're already over on this site because you just got the theme and you've charged your account with the uh, amount of money that you're gonna need. 
and uh, yeah, you're ready to buy this and download it. So as I said a minute ago, this one is $42. It's a great plugin. It's essential if you want to create the site because it does all the stuff for you. It say downloads the products from Amazon. It adds your affiliate link. It syncs the products overnight um, to make sure that all the prices and if a product gets removed from Amazon, it removes it from your site and all that sort of stuff. Updates if a product's changed. So yeah, it's a really great plugin. Uh, great value for forty-two dollars. Uh, and not only do you get the plugin, you get support from the developer if you get stuck at any point. You also get future updates and and all the the usual stuff you'd expect from a premium product. I've already purchased it, so I'm just going to download it straight away. I'm just going to click download. Uh, it's taking me to my downloads. Let's see if I can find it. I bought quite a lot of stuff from it. Ah, there we go. So it's near the top. So I'm going to click download all files and documentation. Stick it into here again. Click save. Let's have a look at that zip file. All we need to do is again extract it, and there you'll find a folder with the version number, very similar to the theme. And within there, you'll find a folder called plugin, and that woozone.zip is what we're going to be uploading to our website right now. So back to the site, back to the dashboard. Then we'll go to plugins and add new. And then upload plugin. I'm just going to find that file which is in here, as I just showed you in the plugin woozone.zip. Perfect. And click install now. So it's just going to upload and install that plugin for us. It says that's done uh, successfully. So let's click activate plugin. There we go, and that's done and installed. And upon doing that, we've got a whole load of messages pop up at the top. So uh, let's go through these and clear these off and, and do whatever it wants us to do. So first thing, would you like to activate your version of Revolution Slider? We don't need to do that, we can't do that because it came bundled with a theme, so uh, I don't need it. So let's just click the little cross. Next one for maximum usability and best experience, blah, 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 use Kingdom. Hey, we're already using Kingdom, so that doesn't matter. Dismiss this notice. The next one is to do with the current memory limit. I'm going to come back to that one in a moment. You need to install your default pages. Okay, let's do that right now. So to install these pages, we need to come to this bottom one, which is setting up WooCommerce, which is the the shopping plugin that we're kind of using to add products and, and stuff. It's kind of a combination between WooCommerce and WooZone. So let's click Run the Setup Wizard. It's very easy. Let's click, let's go. And then let's click continue. Um, that's all fine. Obviously you need to set that to match whatever you're kind of doing. Let's click continue. We don't need to worry about shipping and tax. We're not gonna be doing that because obviously our visitors are gonna be going off to Amazon to purchase their products. So they'll deal with all the shipping and tax. Skip this step. Payments, again, we don't need that because they'll be paying at Amazon. That's it, we're all done. So let's click this little link down here, return to WordPress dashboard. Okay, so this uh, message we've got here, which is to do with installing a default setup, we can just click this button here to do that. It's just gonna make sure that the plugin settings are all fresh and new. So that's all done. We just got this one message left, which is to do with the memory limit. Now you've got two choices on this one. The first thing is you can log into your host gator control panel and you can go into support and into the live chat and you can ask them to up your memory limit uh, for you. That's uh, that's the easy way. What you want to ask, the actual question you want to say is, can you please increase my PHP memory to 128 megabytes. And hopefully they'll just say, yep, no problem, and they'll do it. If you don't wanna be doing that and you wanna do it yourself, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Um, it does involve a little bit of um, techie sort of stuff, not too much. Um, 
But again, if you're gonna ask HostGator, that's fine, do that. And you can just skip this uh, next couple of minutes where I'm gonna show you how to do it manually. So to do it manually, you're gonna to need to FTP up to your website. So the first thing you need to do is get some FTP information. So I'm gonna head over to HostGator again. Ooh. Then I'm gonna click Customer Portal and then log in. Then I'm gonna go into my hosting. A quick way is actually to go back to your email and click on the control panel link, but hey, I'm going the long way. Uh, click Boot Boutique. Then I'm here I'm gonna to go to Files and Folders, across the top here, and then FTP Accounts. Then I'm gonna click Create a new FTP account. Uh, let's call it Eagle, don't enter a directory name. And then we need to create a password. There we go, and then click Create Account. And then we're done. Now the next step is you're gonna need to get hold of some FTP software. I've got a video actually on how to um, do FTP in a little bit more detail. I'll put a card up on the screen now. And uh, yeah, go check that out if you need a bit more information. But I'm on the Mac today and I'm gonna be using a piece of software called Fetch. Here it is, let's close these windows. Yeah, it's called Fetch. It's a great FTP uh, bit of software, it's free. If you're on a PC, do a search for WinSCP, which is another free FTP client. It should look very similar to this. And uh, basically allows you to connect to your site via FTP. So to create a new connection on your FTP software, you're gonna to need to enter some details. The host name is the first one. So if I go back to HostGator, it's gonna tell me all this information. There it is. HostGator call it server. Server, host name, they're the same thing. So I'm just gonna copy that again, make sure I don't get any spaces at the front or the end. Paste that in there. Username is here. And then the password is one I just created. And now we're in. Basically what we're looking at now is all the files and folders that make up our WordPress and our website. Don't worry, you don't need to mess with hardly any of them. We just need to look for one particular file which we're gonna make a slight change to. So if I go into public HTML, there is a file here called wp-config. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy that down to my computer so that I can edit it, then I'm gonna edit it, and then I'm gonna upload it back to the server via FTP. So to copy it, you could just drag and drop. It's very similar to just using Windows or whatever. So I'm just gonna find the folder that I want to copy it to, just the one I've been working with for everything. And I'm just gonna drag it. And there it is. Now you should be able to open this in any kind of text editing type software, or if you've got Dreamweaver, which you probably haven't, but if you have, you can open it in that. I'll just open it with my text editing stuff. Um, you know, by default, Windows or a Mac has a text editor. So what we need to do is add a line to this, um, this file. I'm gonna have to blur out a few little bits on here because it contains some uh, sensitive information in terms of passwords and whatnot. But the line we're gonna add, if we, uh, I'm gonna add it just here, so here's fine, just where this space is. So I've got the uh, the line I'm gonna add in my clipboard. Uh, I just copy and paste it, I can't bother to, to type it, it's too long. Um, and the line is define, and then some brackets, WP underscore memory underscore limit, blah, blah, blah. Speech marks, comma, 128 meg. What I'm gonna do is I'll add that line to the description below this video and also on the blog post which you'll find on wpeagle.com, and then you can just copy and paste it yourself. So I've added that line, I'm just gonna save this file now, file save, close it. Then if I pop up the FTP again, and the, um, the folder that I've got that file in, I'm just gonna drag it back to the server, and then we're all done. So now when I go back into here on our dashboard, and if I just refresh the page, hopefully this message will go. And it has, woohoo! So that means that we've increased our memory on the server to 128 meg. Everything's working, it's all good. 
So now we can start um, setting up WooZone, uh, adding our Amazon details, all that sort of thing. Uh, and then we can you know, start downloading products and all that sort of stuff and get the website up and running. So let's go through these WooZone settings and I'll, I'll explain everything that we're gonna need. So the item purchase code, um, if you go back to Code Canyon, you can find that uh, on the downloads page. So let's do this now. Let's go back to Code Canyon. I find the easiest way to find the code actually if you go back to the uh, the product page, which is this one, and then go to support, and then you'll find your purchase codes here. Let's just copy that one, go back to WooZone, paste it, click activate. And that's done, we're activated and now we've got our options that we can now work through. The first thing to set up is the Amazon config, let's click on that. Right, let me just explain how it all works in terms of being an Amazon affiliate and all that sort of stuff. So, if we go over to Amazon, I'm gonna go over to amazon.co.uk because that's my local Amazon. And if you scroll down to the bottom on, on any Amazon site, whether it be amazon.com, amazon.co.uk, you will find the Associates Program, a link like that. And if you click on that, you'll see a page like this, which allows you to get started, sign up, and all that sort of stuff. Now there's a couple of things I need to stress and make sure that you're aware of. The first is, if you're gonna be promoting um, different country Amazon, so say you're gonna be promoting amazon.com and amazon.co.uk, you need to go to both of those and sign up for the Amazon Associates Program on both of those sites. So you're gonna to need to fill in a form on amazon.co.uk and a form on amazon.com and get approved by both of those sites in order for it to work. The second thing um, is basically a question that I get asked a lot, which is, uh, how can I sign up to be an associate when I don't have my website? Um, which is a common question, it's kind of like a chicken and egg situation. Don't worry, fill in the form, apply to be an Amazon associate and get all the stuff that you need to be able to create the site. And then what will happen is once you start getting traffic to your site and start earning some commissions, Amazon will then come back uh, to you and have a look at your site and then approve you for, for good. So don't worry about filling in the form before we've even built the site, that's fine. You can just enter your domain name as the website and, and make a note that it's work in progress and you'll be fine. Now I'm already signed up as an Amazon associate so I don't need to do the get started now thing. I'm just gonna sign in um, in a second to get all my information that I need in order to set the website up. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say. You need to go and do this right now if you haven't done it already. Um, go and sign up because we're gonna need some information from Amazon in a second. So let's go back to the dashboard. The first thing is request type. Don't worry about that, you can leave that as auto detect. The next one is the Amazon location. I'm gonna set this to UK because this site is bootboutique.co.uk, so it's just gonna be a UK um, targeted site. Just while we're talking about different locations, you've got a couple of options uh, when it comes to location. You can create the one site and pull in products from loads of different locations, different Amazons, amazon.com.co.uk, .de, whatever you like. And WooZone has actually got a really cool feature where on those products that you import, it will kind of have a little box and it will say the availability of that product at the different Amazon locations. So it'll say, you know, Amazon UK, in stock, Amazon.com, out of stock, whatever. And it allows the visitor to choose which country they want to uh, purchase the product from, which is kind of cool. But as I said, if you want to get affiliate commissions on all those different locations, you do need to be approved as an associate on all those different countries. The second option you've got is to create a localized site um, for each country. So for example, I've got bootboutique.co.uk here and I target this as a UK site and I, you know, all the content is UK based and the products are UK based. Um, so that that way I've got a good chance of, for example, ranking on Google, uh, on google.co.uk for UK based searches. And then what I might do is then create another site, bootboutique.de, for example, uh, which will be the German one. And I'll pull in German products and all the text will be in German, all the content will be in German and it will just be German targeted. So you kind of got two choices. It really depends on how much time you got, how much effort you want to put into it, all that sort of stuff. 
um, whether you want to have like the one site which has lots of products from lots of different countries and you know people select which country they want or you have individual sites which are targeted for each of the uh, the separate countries and obviously you would you would kind of link between those and say you know check out our german site and link through to that from the .co.uk i hope that makes sense if you've got any questions on that please just leave a comment below the video so let's scroll down. So the next thing we need to add are our access keys, our access key ID and our secret access key. This is how your website's gonna connect to Amazon to be able to get your products. It's uh, basically an API. Don't worry what that is, what that means, but it allows basically allows your website to talk to Amazon and get all the stuff that you want down. So to get these keys, if we click this link, there's a nice link here, it takes us where we need to go. You need to log in. You're gonna to need to be signed up as an Amazon affiliate before you do this. Let's click continue to security credentials. And then in here we've got our access keys, whatever. So let's uh, drop that down. I've already got some keys going because obviously yeah, I've got I've already got some sites. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some new ones now just to kind of take you through the process. So let me just delete that one. You can only have, um, I think a couple of sets, so but that's generally fine. And you can use the same keys across multiple sites. Oh yeah, there we go, you can have a maximum of two keys. Anyway, let's click create new access key. And that's done, it's got a little tick. And if I drop this little arrow down, click show access key, there they are. So I'm gonna copy and paste them into, um, into the website. So there's the access key, let me copy that, paste that. I'm probably gonna to have to blur these out again. They are quite sensitive things. You wanna keep yours safe and secure. Let's go back and get the secret access key. Copy that and paste. And there we go, that's that bit done. The next thing is the affiliate IDs. So if we go back to here, we can close that. We can close that. And if we go back to here, the Amazon affiliate um, thing, we were just on a second ago, and I'm just gonna sign in. This will take me to my dashboard. So in here, this is your dashboard, this is where you'll see your earnings, your clicks and all that sort of stuff. It's also where we're gonna get our tracking IDs. So basically you can have as many tracking IDs as you like. Uh, I'm gonna click manage over here. And it allows you to kind of work out where stuff's coming from. So if you're gonna have multiple sites, you're gonna need multiple tracking IDs, probably. It just makes it easier in terms of tracking. I've already actually got one for Boot Boutique because uh, I was running a site very similar a little while ago. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy that to my clipboard, go back to WooZone and paste it into the UK box. So again, going back to the country thing, if you're gonna be having the site and you're gonna be targeting multiple countries, then you can put multiple IDs in here. Now the ID is not the same, as I said, this is the UK one that I've just logged into. As we can see, I've got the marketplace up here. Once you've um, applied and signed up for these other countries, you should be able to just like click on, on that sort of thing and switch between the two. I'm not signed up for the US one right now, so I'd have to you know join up for that one. And then you get another tracking ID and it's probably gonna be different to this one and you paste that into these other boxes. So yeah, you, if you're gonna go for US, Germany, France, Japan, you're gonna need to go to all the different Amazons and sign up as an associate for each one and get your individual affiliate IDs and paste them in for each one. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it with the UK because that's all this site is gonna be targeting. So let's scroll down. Set my main affiliate ID to the UK. And then let's click check and just see if it's gonna work. And we've got a message come up that says, it was able to connect with the specified AWS key pair and associate ID, so that's all good news. Uh, let's click save settings. And that bit's all set up. So we're now ready to um, import some products if we want. But before we do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust the look and feel of the site um, to kind of make it look a bit more boot boutique-y, and then I'm gonna start pulling down some products. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my logo, because if we go back to the website, 
it's just got this kingdom store thing. So let's go through some of the theme options and, and um, add our logo, all that sort of stuff. So back in the dashboard appearance and then kingdom theme. So here's our dashboard uh, for the theme this is. So the theme is all the layout and colors and all that sort of stuff. So let's go to layout uh, here. First option is the logo. If you don't already have a logo, please check my channel. I've got a video on how to create a logo for free. Or you might also wanna check out Graphic River, which is part of Invato, where we were earlier with Theme Forest and Co Canyon. On there, you'll find a load of templates for logos where you can buy one for just a few dollars and download it and adjust it to suit your needs. And the other option, of course, is to go to somewhere like Fiverr and pay someone a Fiverr, $5 to create your logo. Let's say I've already got one, so I'm gonna click Upload Logo. Select files, find it on my computer. It's in this folder here. There it is, so let's um, just select that, click Open. There we go. Now you're gonna to want, to make a, want to make a note of the dimensions here, 300 by 81, be whatever your logo is. That's roughly the sort of size you want it, so about 300 wide and about 80 odd or so high. It'll look best like that. Just make a note of that, because you're gonna need them in a sec. Then you're gonna to want to click Insert into Post, and that should be all good. In here is where we're gonna type in those numbers. So mine was 300 by 81. And let's click Save the Settings. So now if we go back to uh, the site, there's our logo, woohoo! The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set some colors and I'm gonna use the colors that are in my logo. And what you're gonna need is your color codes for that. So if you've got a graphics package, um, like Fireworks or Photoshop, that's a great way of getting your color codes. You may already know your color codes if you created the logo, whatever. Um, they're normally a, like a, I think they're called a hex code. Basically they start with like a hash sign uh, and then some numbers. So I'm just gonna open up my logo and get the colors that I'm gonna need for this site. It's often useful actually just to make a note of them because you might need them going forward. But yeah, in most graphics packages, there is a dripper dropper tool like that and then you can just kind of hover over colors and it tells you what they, they are so ooh. yeah mine is there nine three two zero nine one and i'm going to make a note of that and then i've got this other color here this kind of pinky color so again that might be useful so let's just make a note of that which is F1067. Okay, so yeah, they're, they're good to know. So let's go back to the site, uh, back into the dashboard. And then back into appearance and kingdom theme. And then back into the layout. And let's go to colors. So here we go, we can set some colors. So let's set the primary color to be the purple, which was the nine, three, two, zero, nine. Zero nine one. That's better. <laughs> I forgot the one. There we go. And then the secondary color I'll use is the other one, the ready sort of color. So that was F one zero six seven nine. There we go. So let's just save that and see what that looks like. Now, rather than keep going back and forth, I'm going to actually open the front of the website and a new tab. I find it easier rather than back and forth, back and forth. So it's getting in and out of the dashboard. So Let's see what's happened there. Uh, not so much right now. 
But don't worry, these colors will start to come through as we start to make some more changes. Let's just go back, there's a few other settings. The menu colors. Um, I'm gonna change the hover one to be the purple and leave that as it is for now, I think. I can always come back and adjust these later, that's the great thing. I'm just gonna copy, I can't move, uh, typing, I'm so lazy. Uh, let's put that to purple and save the settings. Now I think what we need to do now is actually get some products and things um, onto the site so that we can kind of see the layout and then we can you know, play with it from there. So let's do that now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create some categories on the site, some product categories that then I can then import some products into. Now obviously this site is all about boots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the categories around the brands of boot. Um, but obviously it's gonna depend on what products you're promoting and how you wanna lay out your site. Whether you wanna use brands or, you know, for example, I could have a category for leather or suede or, or whatever you like. But I'm gonna start with the, the brands. So I'm gonna create a couple of categories and to do that I'm gonna go into products and categories. And let's just add a couple to get started. So I'm gonna add UGG, uh, Australia, I think they're called. I think you've all heard of an UGG boot. And click add new product category like that. And then the next one I'm gonna do is Fly London, which is another sort of boot. And of course I can add more of these going forward uh, if I like, which I probably will do because Two brands is not gonna be enough, I thought. So now we've got our categories, we can start to import some products from Amazon. So to do that, we need to go into WooZone and Insane Mode Import. Then if we scroll down, we can start to uh, type in some keywords and, and do a search for, for some products. So I'm gonna type in Ugg Boot. Boots women even, that's perfect. Then you can refine it by categories, so I guess it's apparel, 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 women. And what we got in here. Mm, it's not in here. So maybe it's not apparel, let's say apparel. Shoes, that's better. Shoes, and that's probably fine. Um, the other option we've got down here is how many pages of Amazon we wanna go through. Uh, so it's obviously really how many products you wanna add. I'm gonna go for the first five pages. That should give me plenty. Uh, let's click launch search. So that's gonna go off and do its thing. Then if we scroll down, we've got all these products, 50 products in fact. So I can click that and I can show products, just maybe check whether I want them. Um, but they look fine to me, there's nothing weird come up. They all look like boots, sort of boots-ish. That's a bit of a shoe, that's a flip-flop. Um, I don't think that really matters too much. You may, it obviously depends on what you wanna do. You can just untick the stuff you don't want. Okay, and then we're gonna scroll down. And we wanna get all the images. I wanna get all the variations. So a variation is when you've got products with size, a bit like boots or colors or whatever. Generally, you're gonna probably want all of the variations. And the other option here, we've got a spin on import. So that's really up to you whether you wanna do that or not. So a spin is when it's gonna change the text from Amazon to make it slightly unique. The, the problem with doing this is that sometimes it makes the text a bit gibberishy, if that makes sense, because it uses like a thesaurus to uh, replace words within the description and yeah, it can be a bit random, but it's up to you. What I'd recommend if you've got the time is to actually rewrite the descriptions yourself. Um, but yeah, again, that, that takes time. So, um, uh, I'm gonna turn the spin off for now. Uh, I'm gonna keep the import attributes and then I'm gonna select the category 
to import it into. Now, if you use the category from Amazon, what can happen is that you're gonna get a whole load of categories coming to your website all over the place, because Amazon has many, many, many thousands of different categories, and, and different boots are gonna be in different categories, or different products are gonna be in different categories, and it, it can make it a bit of a mess, and you lose a bit of control over the layout and structure of your site. So, I'm gonna import it, obviously, into the, oh, the UGG, the UGG category. And I wanna do it now, so let's click that. So this is gonna go away and import those products for me and add my affiliate link and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's gonna take a few moments, so let's just uh, let it do its thing. Okay, so that's all done. It took uh, just one minute, five seconds to do the 47 products, which is pretty quick. So let's go and have a look what these products look like on the website. So I'm gonna close this box. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the menu. Now the menu is the bit across the top, you know, the navigation you get on websites, you call it navigation, call it menu, whatever. WordPress call it a menu. So if we go into appearance and menus, I'm gonna create a new menu. Then in here I'm gonna give it a name, call it main menu, that seems like a good name. And then click create. I'm gonna tick this box here to add it to the main navigation. There is some more navigation that we can add across the top, which we'll do a bit later on. And then down here I'm gonna go for, oh, it's not here actually. We want product categories, which is not showing. So to make it show, you need to go up the top here, go screen options, and select product categories. And there it is. And there's the UGG. All I'll do is I'll actually add both, and why not? We'll add some fly boots in a minute. So let's click Save Menu. So now if we go back to the website, we just close these tabs, let's keep it tidy. You go back to the website. We can see that we've got our menu up here. It's working nicely, and then if we click on UGG, there's all our UGG boots. Um, that have come down from Amazon. So if we click on one of them, there's the boot, give it a review. We can choose a color, then choose a size. There it is. And then we can click add to cart. There we go. This kind of text and stuff is a little bit big and messy at the moment, so we'll, we'll tidy that up in a in a minute. I just wanna check this is all working. So yeah, it's added it to our cart, we can view our cart. There's our boot. And then we can click proceed to checkout, and hopefully we should be off to Amazon. There we go, it's added it to our cart, we can continue. And then obviously if I checked out and bought this boot I would earn a commission. Well, actually I wouldn't because you're not really supposed to buy your own stuff on your own affiliate links. But if someone else uh, bought this boot via my site, just like that, I would obviously get my Amazon commission. Would be, all seems to be working. So let's go back to the site. Uh, I can just click on the back actually. Uh, and let's have a look at how everything is looking. So the first thing I've just noticed is um, I want to tweak these colors a bit more on the menu. The blue's not right and uh, and just yeah, try and jazz it up a little bit. So let's go back into the dashboard. I'm gonna do it in a new tab again so I can switch between the two. Go back into Appearance and Kingdom. And then go to the layout. And the colors. And it's these menu things that I want to uh, want to change. So currently, the normal menu state color is this kind of greeny color. I don't know where it's getting that blue from. Hmm. Anyway, let's see. What I want to do is actually I want to try and make it more purpley. So let's change the background color to the purple. Like that. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Uh, 
Uh, hasn't seemed to have changed. That's strange. Let's go back and have a look. Uh, let's make all of these purple and see what happens. Just going to refresh the page. Okay, for some reason that doesn't seem to be having any effect. It's a bit strange. Now it could be because um, because of the cache and, and all that sort of stuff that you have with browsers. So when you're making changes to things like colors, you sometimes need to clear the cache on your browser. So in Chrome, if I just go into preferences, and where am I looking? If I go advanced settings, go to content settings, all cookies, and then if I'm just going to look up boot, and then just I'm going to remove all that. It may log me out of the site, but hey ho, let's just see if it makes the colours come through. No, nope, not yet. There we go. It's all gone purple. Um, it's a cache thing um, when you change colours and it doesn't. Um, show them so there I did a, I forced the refresh of the page I used on my Mac shift command and R uh, I've obviously made it far too purple so let's just go back into the kingdom settings and let's change the hover state to the uh, this one the kind of pinky color and for this one I'm going to make it white so there we go Click white, save the settings. That's done. Let's go back, refresh. Ah, that's looking better. Oh, and these other colors have changed as well. So yeah, earlier when they hadn't changed, it was it was to do with my cache. So you're gonna need to either clear your cache or force uh, a page reload. If you Google that, force reload, and then whatever browser you're using, it'll tell you the, the keystroke or whatever you need to do to load the page without the cache. So. It's looking uh, kind of on my color scheme, which is good. So let's have a look at the products again. All looking real nice. They've got the purple and the pink going on. So here's our products. Uh, let me just have a quick look around. They're all looking good. I find this as of thing a bit uh, a bit big. Now you can't actually remove it. I know uh, previous videos people have said, hey, I want to remove this, which you can do from a technical point of view, but from an Amazon point of view, they don't like you doing that for some reason. It's part of the terms of services. So you need to keep it, but I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And to do that, I'm gonna need to actually add a little bit of code to our settings. So I'm just using the inspect here. What I'll do is I will uh, put this bit of code in the description again so you don't have to worry about it, but um, it's a bit of CSS that we're doing here, but it's fine. I'm just gonna adjust it so that it's a little bit smaller. I think 12, 12, perfect. I'm gonna take this little bit of code and I can close that and then go back into the dashboard. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on customize. And then in here we've got this additional uh, CSS thing going on. And then I'm just going to paste it in like that and click save and publish. Then hopefully if we go back and refresh this uh, product. There we go. It's nice and small. So it's all looking really nice and uh, the boots are on here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go uh, in the background and just add a few more products just to fill out the site and a few more brands. And then what we'll do is we'll start working on the home page, get that done. And uh, we're kind of nearly getting there. So um, yeah, that's great news. Uh, give me a minute just to add some more products and um, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, uh, that took a few minutes but I've managed to get all of my products imported. 
Uh, added a few more brands, as you can see, we've got Fly London, uh, Gabor, Lucky Brand, and a few others, and all of these have got some lovely boots within them. Um, some have worked, some haven't. What you're gonna need to do is just go through your products after you've done an import. Anything that's not come through quite right, like this one hasn't got an image, um, either fix it manually, um, or I just generally just kind of delete them off. It's, it's not really worth worrying about it, to be fair, especially when you're adding loads and loads of products, so you can just come in here and move to trash. See what I did there? When you logged into um, your website, let me just go back to the front. Uh, yeah, when you logged in, you've got this bar across the top, so when you're looking at, you know, say a product or, or whatever, let's go into this one, you can come up the top and just click edit to make any changes. You want to change the image or the text or or whatever you like. So yeah, I've added all my products, so uh, that's that's good. And um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do the home page. I think that's a good good place to uh, to do next. Uh, and then we can do the final bits and bobs like the, uh, the footer, um, this header, and I can show you how to add some blog posts and, and all that other stuff, which is gonna be very important because uh, as I um, said previously at the beginning of the video, it's very important that you uh, not only add some products, but you also add some valuable content to the site. So yeah, I'm talking articles, videos, reviews, and, and that sort of thing. Not only will it help you in terms of getting approved with Amazon, but it'll also help in terms of getting traffic and actually making a success of the site. So. Um, yeah, obviously adding blog posts and stuff is gonna be important, but we'll get to that a little bit later on in this video. So yeah, let's do the home page. So to create a home page, I'm gonna go up to here and go new and page. And I call it home. Okay, we call it home page. <laughs> call it whatever you like. Okay. And then what I want within the um Within the home page, I want a slider at the top, and then maybe a little bit of text that just says, um, "You know, we uh, we find the best boots" or something like that. And then we can show off some products as well with on uh, on the home page. Now, I'm going to reference a page on the AA Team uh, website. They're the people that made the uh, the plugin and the theme. I happen to have it to hand. It's docs.aa team. Blah blah blah. Uh, again, I will add a link to this within the description of the video so you can find it but yeah if you basically just go onto the AA team it's real there's some real good stuff on here the docs.aa team and what we're looking for is the short codes which are very handy so let's add um, a, this one first which is the featured products I'm just going to copy this and I'm just going to paste it in what I actually want to do is switch to the text editor it doesn't really make too much difference, but when you're copying and pasting stuff, it's generally better to use the uh, the text editor. Um, so let me just publish that, and I'll show you what that that's done. Okay, we publish that. What we need to do actually is set the home page uh, first. Set this page to be the home page, if that makes sense. So let's go to settings and general. We just need to tell WordPress this is the page that we want to be the home page. Uh, so your yeah, settings, oh sorry, it's not general, it is in reading. And then we're gonna select, um, front page displays a static page, and I'm gonna select the home page. We'll come back and set up the post page in a second, that's basically your blog. So now if we go back to the site, it says feature products, but there aren't any products showing. So to set some featured products, and these are gonna be you know, your most popular or your favorite, <clears throat> whatever you like. If we go into products down here, then what we can basically do is just pick um, some products that we want to add as featured. So uh, maybe this one here, and you're just basically gonna tick this little star. Very easy, and that makes it a featured product. So maybe that one. I don't want them all from the same brand, so. Um, we just sort by name, that might give me a, a little bit of a different um, different thing. That one looks quite nice. I can see that I've accidentally imported some stuff that's not particularly good. That's like a, what's that? It's some color thing for the shoes. So I could always just delete these products that I want and that one. But yeah, I'm getting distracted anyway. Let's add a couple more features. You're gonna wanna add at least four or five these are all fly, but yeah, that doesn't matter, I suppose. Another one of them. 
you might want to obviously put a bit more thought into it and uh, decide exactly which products. I'm just obviously for this example, just going to pick some some random ones. Let's go to the end. I don't want them all to be from the same brand. So, ug, ug, yeah, ug, ug, ug. Perfect. I think I did four. Then let's do one more for luck. Uh, that one. I have no idea about boots. <laughs> there we go. So now if we go back, oh, sorry, go back to the home page. There's our feature products. You see. So that's that's good. Let's go and we can now click edit page up here if we need to make a change. Within the short code, you've got a few um, settings in terms of how many you want to show per page, that sort of stuff. You can just adjust these numbers, um, but that's that's fine for now. So we've got our feature products. That's great. Let's go back to the uh, the document and see what other short codes we've got. Now it's not actually on here the short code that I want to use, which is a bit strange. Um, but not to worry, not to worry. I know what it is anyway because I've got it on my other site. Let me just pop it up. I don't know if you've seen any of my other videos, but this one was the very first site I did a couple of years back now, I think. Um, the zombie one. And basically, with the boots one, I want to get a similar kind of layout to this. So, yeah, feature products at the top, and then from certain categories. So, I'm just going to edit this page and I'll show you uh, the other short codes that I'm running. I don't know why they're not in that, that document. I'm going to, I'll send a message to AA team and ask them to add it. So the next one, and again, I'll add all these short codes to the description and to the blog post on wpeagle.com. The next one I want is this one, which is basically just pulling um, products from certain categories, if that makes sense. So let's just copy that and go back to here and paste that in. And I'm gonna put latest UGG boots and then I'm going to copy this again, and I'm going to put latest fly London boots. Then one more. I'm going to put latest. What other brand have I got? Rocket Dog. Okay. Now to uh, set the actual categories for each one of these. We need to change this bit here. Obviously, it's not zombie toys. So to do that, if we go into products and categories, I'm just going to open this in a new tab so that I stay on this page. Uh, obviously, I'm going to need to do some copy pasting. And so the first one was UG. So I just need to copy this little slug here, which it doesn't look like an, I can do that. So let me just click edit. Oh. Hmm, that's strange. Let's just go back again. I'm going to click on it. Hmm, I don't know why it's not letting me edit that. Yeah, it works okay on the uh, the other brands. It's just something weird with that UG thing. Anyway, I can read that. I'm going to have to type it in. It's UG hyphen Australia. So in there. Uh, what's the next one? Fly London. It's going to be Fly High for London. Yeah, of course it is. And then Rocket Dog. It's going to be high Rocket High from Dog, I guess. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Okay. Well, I'm going to add a slider in a second to the uh, the top of the page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the post title because at the moment it says home page at the top, which is, if we look here, oh, no, don't word for it. Let me just open that a new tab so we can have a look. Yeah, we don't want it to say home page like that. So that's why we're going to turn that to no. Okay, let's click update. <coughs> then if we refresh the page, 
got the feature products, got the latest Ugg boots, got the latest Fly London boots, and the latest Rocket Dog boots. So that's looking really good. So just above this area, I'm gonna add a little bit of text. Um, so let's do that now, let's go edit page. Then I am gonna switch back to the visual editor because we're gonna be editing uh, text. I'm just gonna add a enter there, line space. Then I'm gonna type in something like welcome to boot boutique. Uh, where you'll find the best selection of women's boots hand picked just for you from Amazon. Something like that. Um, <laughs> obviously you'll write whatever you want. You want to try and include some keywords that might be useful in terms of Google and stuff, so that's why I've got women's boots in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center that, so I'm just gonna highlight it, and then it, this works a bit like Word, if you ever used uh, Microsoft Word. So we can align that center, and then we can make it a bit bigger by setting it as a heading. Something like a heading three might be big enough. Let's have a look, click update. Let's view the page. There's our text, that's not too bad. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Let's go back and, uh, and see what it looks like as a H2 or heading two. I can just highlight that, go to heading two, click update, and then view the page. The heading two is actually smaller than the heading, for that doesn't make any sense. Let's try it as a, I don't know, a H1, is that? That's gotta be bigger. Oh, peculiar, normally it goes H1's the biggest, H2's a little bit smaller, H3's a bit smaller still, so that's weird. Never mind. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, I think I preferred the H3 to start with. Let's <laughs> hey, you just gonna have to play around and see what works best for you. You can make it bold if you like. It's gonna make a lot of difference. Okay, so that's done. Let's um, add one more short code while we're here. So just below that, I'm gonna add um, latest blog posts and things. And now this one is on this document. It's this here. Just gonna copy that. I haven't got any blog posts just yet, but I will add some later on in the video. Let's click update. And view that page one last time. So we've got our products, Ugg boots, and all the rest of the boots there. Then there's our latest blog posts. So I'm happy with that, we just need to add a slider at the top, so let's do that now. I'm just gonna go to the dashboard and then down here, I'm gonna go into slider revolution. I'm gonna click new slider. I'm gonna leave that as it is in here. I'm gonna give it a name, I'm gonna call it homepage. The alias can be homepage too, that's fine. Just gonna leave it a standard slider for now and leave all that as auto. Hopefully it will just work, but if not, we can tweak it a bit later. Let's click Save Settings. And we're ready to create a slide. Now I have got some images and things to hand. Um, so let's go and set a background. You're gonna need a nice big image for this. If I go in here, I've hopefully got some. Uh, let's see what we got. Let's go for that one first. There we go, it's an image of some boots. Let me just save that. I wanna see what it looks like first before I go too much further. So let's go back to the home page. Uh, let me just get rid of that because I need to know where we're at. I've got too many tabs open again. That's always a problem with me. <laughs> okay, let's edit the home page. Scroll down. I'm going to set it to revolution slider down the bottom here. And then it's already selected home page for me. Let's click update. 
Let's have a look. Okay, there's the image. It's uh, it's obviously far too big and not quite the right size, so we need to make a few adjustments. So let's do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back into Slider Revolution and just have a look at the settings again. Home page. Click on the cog. Now let's see, let's change it to full width and see if that makes any difference in terms of the slide layout. Save settings. Got too many tabs, let me just close some of these tabs so we know where we're at. Let's go back and visit the site. Okay, that's still far too big. So back in again. I think I might have to set some custom sizes. We'll try full screen, why not? I don't know, let's see what happens. Just gonna open site in another tab. It's not too bad, it's, it's too big for me really. Um, I don't want it that high, so let's make an adjustment. Set it as full width. Then I'm just going to adjust these um, sizes. So in here, I'm going to type in 1720 by, um, let's go for 500. I think that's the size of the image I'm using, so that might help. Let's, uh, let's have a look at that. Refresh. Hey, that's looking a lot better. I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's just go back in and I want to add a few more things to the slide. So I'm going to go to the slide editor again and probably add another slide as well. It's good to have a couple of slides. Let's click on the pencil to edit it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer and it's an image. I'm going to upload. Uh, an image I've got, or you can just add text, it's up to you. If you want to add, sorry, let me just show you. If you wanted to add text, you go add layer, add text, and then you can just, you know, add some text, drop it where you want to on the slider. But I've actually got um, an image that I want to use. Uh, let's have a look. Is it that one or is it that one? Let me have a look, see what I've got. I've got that one. I think it's that one, isn't it? Well, that one looks good to me. So um, so yeah, you're gonna need to get some images done um, or just use a bit of text. You just get a nice photo and then add some text yourself over it. But I've got this thing here that I'm gonna use. Insert that. And what I want it to be, I want it to be in the middle. So if I click there, layer align center, then layer align middle, that should be in the middle. Let's save it and have a look. So if we refresh, it's a bit dark. Maybe that's not the right one. Let's uh, let's take it out and try the other image I've got, which was white. It should probably look better. So add layer image. Let's go for that one. I think this will be better. Yeah, that will work better. Then we'll center that. And then let's refresh. Looking good. So let's just add one more slide. So if we come back in here and then we can click add slide. Add blank slide. Let's set the background image, upload a file. Uh, we've got one here for leather boots. Let's see what that one looks like. Looks quite nice. These are just kind of stock images and, and whatnot that I found um, 
before. So Graphic River and place like that is uh, iStock. They're great for these sort of images. Um, have we got any text? I've got a quality. Let's see what that one is. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm just going to center that and save. Let's refresh. So that's the first slide. There's the second slide. Let's cut that image off a little bit. Let me just see if I've got a better image uh, than that one. So change. Let's have a look at this one. What's this one? Yeah, I think that one's better. So let's save. If you want to reorder the slides, I want to make that one first. I can just drag that like that. Let's click save again. And let's refresh. There we go. That's our slider done. And the home page is kind of coming together very nicely now indeed. So just to finish off, we need to do um, some blog posts and work on this footer and, and some final, uh, final tweaks. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. But before we do that, what I'm going to do now is add some of the static pages to the site. Now a static page is something like the About Us or an FAQ page or anything that's not a product or a blog post, basically just a normal web page. By the way, if I sound a little bit different, it's because halfway through recording this video, the microphone I was using uh, fell off the desk and broke itself. So I've got a new microphone here. Hopefully I sound a little bit better because um, it's supposed to be a pretty cool pro mic that I've got here. Um, but yeah, let me know. Hopefully I'm sounding a little bit better. Maybe just the same or maybe worse. Anyway, that's a bit of a tangent. Let's get on and do these pages. So um, what I'm going to do is going to go up here and go to new page. And this one's going to be the About Us, so I'm just going to call it About Us. And I happen to have um, some copy to hand. If I just uh, go into here, I've got this pages. There we go. Not a huge amount of copy, if I'm honest, but uh, you probably want to add a little bit more than this, but you get the idea. I'll make that a bit bold. Take this big space chunk out. I'm going to make That's better. I'm going to make this bit a uh, a quote like that, and then publish. Let's see what that looks like. That's fine. We're going to tidy up this uh, this footer and all this stuff in a second. So. Um, that does look a little bit messy, but I'm going to make that a little bit better in a second. So that's the about us. Let's do another one. This one's going to be an FAQ. Again, I've got the copy right here. <laughs> Again, not the not the biggest amount of copy, but it's a start. There we go. I'm just going to add a menu once I've done these pages to the top of the site so they're they're easily accessible. And the final one is a privacy policy, privacy, privacy, whatever. And I've got something here. You can find a um, privacy, privacy <laughs> policy uh, online. Just do a search. You'll be able to find one you can use. Well, maybe you've already got one. I don't know. So that's our page is done. So let's add these pages to a menu. Uh, so we're going to go to appearance and menus. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new menu and call it top menu. Click create.
There we go, then we can add those pages by just ticking the boxes, clicking add to menu. I put that like that, like that. So I'm gonna tick top navigation for the display location and click save. And let's go back and have a look at the site. There we go, we've got our links across the top there. Perfect. Now this bit of text up here, that can also be adjusted if you like. To do that we need to go back into the dashboard. And then go to uh, Appearance Kingdom Theme. Now obviously you can add a phone number if you like, you may not want to, because obviously it's an affiliate site. Um, you can always get a phone number from Skype or something like that if you wanna just have a, a separate number, but because um, it does kind of make your site look a little bit more legit, if that makes sense, but it's not essential. I'm gonna take it out um, just now. Now interestingly, um, even though that is obviously the header, it's in the footer section of the admin, uh, which is a bit weird. Never mind. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the uh, the best women's boots handpicked from Amazon. Like that this is the copyright text. I'm gonna change that as well. That's a link thing you can do. I'm just gonna take it out and just put WP Eagle. And change the year, it's 2017 now, obviously. In here you can put some links through to your Amazon and LinkedIn and Money or whatever all this stuff is. I'm gonna leave that for now, don't need it. That's all saved, let's go and take a look at the site. Okay, there's that bit done, there's that. It's coming together really nicely. So let's get on and sort out this footer area. First thing I'm gonna do is add some logos uh, across the bottom for all the boots and things that uh, the boot manufacturers that I'm promoting. So let's go back into the dashboard. I'm just gonna tidy up these tabs. Let's just go back to the one and go into the dashboard. Okay, and then down here we've got this partners uh, section which is part of the theme, the kingdom theme. I'm gonna add a new partner. Let's start with Ugg, Ugg, Ugg. There we go. And then let's find a, I've already downloaded some logos, I've, I'm organized today. So you just find these logos on, on the web, obviously do a search on Google, whatever. There's Ugg. And insert into post. Now in here you can add a link to uh, either off to Amazon or to somewhere else on your website. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just link to somewhere on my website. So let's just bring it up in this other tab. So I'm just gonna link through here to this, the actual UGG category. So there we go, just copied and pasted that. Ah, actually, before we go much further, I wanna change the uh, the addresses. I don't like this index.php. Uh, I'm gonna take that in a sec, so let's just get rid of that. Click publish. We're gonna do that right now before I add any more logos. But there's our, so yeah, I don't like that index thing. It just looks messy and, and whatnot. So to fix that, we need to go into settings and permalinks. Yeah, we've got all this blah in there. We don't need that. Let's just change it to post name. And in fact, I'm gonna change it to slash percentage sign category, percentage sign slash. Again, you'll find this in the, oh, too many slashes, just need the one slash. I'll put this down in the description if you wanna copy and paste it, but there you go. That's that's what I'm gonna go for. You can have whatever you like really, but you either Generally, just gonna want post name or category post name. Makes uh, the URLs a lot friendlier. Let's just have a look and see what change, what that change has done. I'm just gonna refresh the page. So it's got rid of that index thing. And then if I click on a boot. Yeah, 
it looks nice and tidy. There's no index.php. Anyway, let's get back to those logos. Let's see, the UG has, the UG's arrived, uh, which is looking nice. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that weird white background that it puts, which I don't think looks very nice. I think it'd be better if it's just all gray. So we'll do that in a sec, but let's just add a few more of these logos. I'll close that, go back into partners and add new partner. Next one is, let me think of my head, it'll be Fly London. Add new logo, find it on the computer. There it is. Perfect, insert into post. Uh, why don't I close that other tab, that was silly. Find a pen to always have the front and the back actually in different tabs, as you'll see, but not too many tabs, otherwise it gets, gets too confusing. So yeah, Fly London, Copy that, paste that in. Let's refresh, have a look at that one. Oh yeah, but I think you get the idea. I'll add the rest of the logos. You don't need to watch me repeatedly <laughs> upload the logos. Um, so yeah, I'll just do a quick edit and uh, then we'll crack on with the rest. Okay, so I've uploaded all the brand logos, there they are looking good. If you add more than the one, two, three, five, you get these little arrows so you can just nicely scroll it. So yeah, as I said, I'm gonna get rid of the white backgrounds on them because that looks a bit rubbish. So to do that, we're gonna need to add a little bit of custom CSS again. Don't worry, I'll put the code again in the uh, description below and on the blog post over at wpeagle.com. Be sure to go and check it out. So let's just quickly inspect. I've got some videos on adjusting themes and stuff with um, uh, CSS and, and this sort of thing if you're that way inclined and you wanna make some further customization. So let's have a look what's going on here. There's gonna be a white background somewhere. Let's see where it is. Not there, not there, must, not there. It's got to be in here. There it is, look. So that's what we need to change. Let's just set that to none. And then I'm just, oop, or transparent even, that's better. That's what we want. Okay, I'm just gonna copy this. And similar to earlier when we adjusted that uh, font size, we need to go into uh, appearance and customize. Additional CSS, and then I'm gonna just paste that in there. I'm just gonna actually leave the bit that we need. We don't need all this stuff, just the background color setting. And then, oh look, it's there and it's working nicely. I think they just look better, but obviously in order for this to work, you need to make sure that your logos are PNG files with a transparent background. Uh, obviously, if they've already got a white background and they're JPEGs or whatever, then you'll, that bit won't work and you'll still have white uh, white backgrounds on your logos. Let's just close that. A little trick actually, or a little tip, when you're searching for logos, so say you go over to Google. Uh, I've just Googled Google, blimey. You gotta be careful when you do that, you can break the internet. Uh, so say you're looking for, a, like me, an UG logo, and then you get a whole load come up. If you go into Google Images, and then over here you've got this tools, which is really useful when you search for images because you've got this color setting here. And if I just select transparent there, it's gonna bring up all the logos that have got a transparent background. So perfect for this particular uh, usage application. Another little thing, going back to the sliders and that sort of stuff, say you were looking for uh, some boots, um, because you want a nice big image for your slider. We just turn off the transparent. And okay, so like in here, there's some nice images. And you, when you're choosing images and selecting images um, from Google and other places, you wanna make sure that they're not copyright because you, know, you start putting copyright images on your site, you could get in trouble. And believe me, I'm talking from experience there <laughs> that you will get scary letters from companies saying, oh, you've broken our copyright, you owe us thousands of dollars which is not what you want. So there's another little trick on Google. When you go to tools, there is a usage rights uh, filter. So you can say like labeled for reuse. 
Um, and then all these uh, these images are fine. These are good to go. You know, you use them on a slider. Problem is, they're not always great quality. Um, but you never know. You might find something that's that's worth uh, worth using. Who knows? So yeah, just a little tip for you. So let's go back to the site. Close all that down. That's looking nice now, and it kind of adds a nice break between um, the top content and the pages. So I bet these are looking a bit better now. These these static pages. Yeah, they are looking better because they've got that grey bar. So anyway, let's uh, let's just tidy up this bit here, um, this footer area. So the footer area is made up of widgets. So um, we just need to adjust these widgets. So I'll show you where the widgets are. So a widget is basically just an, an element that you can place around your WordPress site, either in footers or in sidebars. Um, and you can get widgets for all sorts of different things. So it's under appearance and widgets. So in the moment, at the moment we've got uh, just our footer content here and it's full of all this stuff, uh, which I don't want. I don't want the search, because there's already a search at the top of the site. Recent post is a good one, we'll have that. So latest from the blog. That's gonna be the title, let's set that to free. We can adjust it in a minute. Obviously we need to add some blog posts as well, we'll do that as well. Recent comments, I don't want that, delete that. And the, the footer on this theme is made up of four columns, so four widgets is normally about right. So I'm gonna get rid of all them. So we've got recent posts. I want a just a standard text one. So I'm gonna have like a little about us. So call that about us. And then in here, I'm gonna put something like, uh, we're an Amazon powered boot uh, ladies. I haven't used the word ladies yet, so I'm gonna use, get that in there again, the SEO and all that stuff. We're an Amazon powered ladies boot website. We hand pick the best quality boots just for you. Something like that will be fine. So we've got two widgets now. Um, I want another one with a kind of a menu, again, just linking to uh, the brands, I think, or maybe latest products. Let's have a look what we've got. So down here, there's a whole load of different widgets um, that you can use. What I'm gonna go for is, uh, what do we got? So we've got WooCommerce products. Top rated products will be good. I'll set that to, to free, something like that. And I think what I want as a final one is like a, a menu. So let's add a custom menu. And I wanna use the top menu and just call it like more information because people might miss the links at the top of the page. So if I put them at the bottom too, they'll definitely find. Let's save all that. So now if we go back to the site, Scroll down. There we go, we've got our about us, the latest from the blog, the top rated, and the more information. So that's all looking fine. I think I'll just drop that down to two, because um, it's kind of made it a bit high. So we can adjust that again, let's go back in. We go straight into widgets, actually there's a shortcut if you go here, and then widgets. And the top rated, I'm gonna drop that down. To two. Obviously, you can use whatever widgets you like. Have a play around with. There's loads in there to play around with, and see which ones um, work the best for your site. Yeah, that's all right. I'm happy with that. So I think we need to add some blog posts now um, and get the blog up and running. So to do that, I'm going to create a new page, and I'm going to call it blog. Don't need to add any content here, just click publish. Okay, that's published. Now I think we need to actually set a template for this particular theme. So if we go down here and go to template, there is one that says template blog. That's probably the one that we need. Let's select that and then I'll just update the page. Let's view the page. Let's 
got a blog post on it, that's good. So let's go back and add it to a menu and just configure it correctly as the blog page. So let's go into appearance and menus. And there's the blog there, I'm just gonna add that to the, um, the top menu again, save. Then I'm gonna go down into settings and reading. Remember we came in here earlier to set the home page. And I'm gonna set the post page as blog, which is the page we just created. That's saved, let's go back to the site and take a look. So now we've got a blog link up here, which is good. Let's give it a click. That ah, looks pretty much the same, but uh, it's all all working. So I'm gonna add some posts now. Uh, luckily, I've got some to hand. So if we go in, and, well actually the first thing I'll do is I'll delete this Hello World default post, don't really need that. Edit post. Move to trash. So we've got no posts now and we can start adding some. So let's do that. So to add a post, uh, you obviously click add new. So in terms of the kind of posts that you wanna be adding, um, you wanna be adding some sort of value and obviously related to the product. So for example, for my site, I could pick the best boots for winter uh, or the best boots, the best waterproof boots or the best suede boots or the best red boots or the best boots for people with small feet or the best boots for people with big feet. And you know, then just obviously create a bit of content, link through to some products on the site. Uh, maybe even insert some products into the post and then you're starting to add some value. So I've got a couple of posts that I've very quickly knocked up. They're not particularly of, of good quality and really just for this demonstration, what you wanna do is spend a little bit of time on your posts. There needs to be at least 250 words, ideally. If you can include videos, images, all that sort of stuff, you will do better than just putting any old crap up. So I've got some posts on my computer here in this folder called blog posts. First one is why we love fly London boots. That sounds perfect. Let's just open that up. So uh, here's an article here. I'm gonna paste that in. Oh, I seem to have missed the top bit, hang on. There we go, let's select all, try again. Okay. This link here, you wanna make sure is linking through to the right category. Let me just edit that link. It's an old one. So let me just open the site and then yes, another tab. <laughs> Copy the Fly London link. I'm just gonna put that in there like that. Perfect. <clears throat> Why we love Fly London boots. Okay, and we need to add a featured image. I'm just gonna add logo, I think. Let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> this one here. I'm not gonna be bothered, I might go and find another better image, but uh, I haven't got one. So let's just see what that looks like. It looks kind of funky. <laughs> So they're, they're like a certain size, and let's see what size this is to make it look good. I mean, you can adjust this size with CSS, but probably better to, what is this size? Oh, yeah, it pops up quite nicely, but I need, I just wanna know how we, oh, 1140 by 260 is the sort of image we wanna go for. So let me see if I can just knock an image up that is that size. Give me two seconds, I'm gonna do a quick edit. Okay, so I've knocked something up in, um, Fireworks or whatever, Photoshop, whatever you like, this will do. It's the right size anyway, the 1140 by 260, uh, which is the size of the featured images on the blog. So I actually <laughs> ripped it off of shoe here. Uh, but never mind, let's go back to the site and I'm just gonna edit this post. Let's remove this and set. That one I just, did, which is in here. Let's see what that looks like. By the way, oh yeah, we need to add a category. So let's just uh, put in the category Fly London. That should be fine. Click update. 
You can have as many categories as you like and a post can be in multiple categories as well if you want. So look at that. That looks better. I'm not quite sure what it's gonna look like. Um, on the rest of the site, let's have a look on the blog. Hmm. That's not worked either. Interesting. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this to be a bit bigger. Let's just. I'm going to have to do some CSS again. You'll find it in the video description. What's going on with this? Okay, that looks better. Uh, let's add a bit of margin at the bottom. Okay, so let's just put this in first. Ooh, just copy and paste. I don't need all this stuff, it's just the uh, the width and height. Okay, I say you find this code in the description and on wpeagle.com. Actually, it might not be in the description, no, I tell a lie, because YouTube doesn't actually let you post uh, a paste or post code in the description. So yeah, be sure to check out wpeagle.com. Okay, let's just refresh, see if that change has taken effect. It hasn't, let's just see why. Because this probably width needs to be 100%, let me just adjust that. There we go, I just need to adjust this image inside there. Um, okay, I had to do a quick edit there. I made some CSS adjustments just to make the blog look a bit better. You'll find all these again on the post over at wpeagle.com. Be sure to go check them out. You'll find all the code and whatnot that you need to um, put into that custom CSS if you want it to look just like this. So this is our blog and this is our blog post. And it's a good one. I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add another one. Let's go to new post. And this one is, let's have a look in my post folder. Oh, I haven't got any more, maybe it's in Word. Okay, it's just here, I know what it is. It's um, how to spot fake Ugg boots. Paste that in here. Again, I've got a link there, let me just check that that's okay. When you're linking, you can actually search stuff. So I can just do a search for Ugg boots and it should bring up the category. What's it called? It's actually called Ugg Australia, isn't it? It's not going to bring up my category. Oh, why not? Oh, never mind. Just have to find the link myself. There it is. We just close this, don't need this anymore. There we go, copy that link and paste that into the URL just here, perfect. Then actually I've got a video that I'm gonna add uh, to the top, it's not one of my videos, it's just one I found on YouTube, which is fine, you know, you can do that, um, share other people's content on your blog to help you make content, is all good, so I could just, you can just, paste a YouTube link in and it will embed the video for you in WordPress, that's pretty cool. And let's add a category called UG Australia. And publish. So let's have a look at this one. There we go. Now I just need to add a featured image to this one. 
So um, I'm just gonna edit the post. So we just need to add a featured image. Luckily I've got one to hand. Uh, let's go set featured image and upload. Then a select file on my computer. There it is. Oh, come on. What are you doing? Weird. <laughs> That's not, hang on, what the? Let's try that again. There we go. Hmm, that was weird, anyway. So there's our Ugboot post. And let's click update. Okay, there's our Ugg post, uh, Ugg post, Ugg boot post. And you see they're appearing here as well under the latest from the blog. So a couple of other things you might wanna do um, before um, the site's kind of officially done. Um, you can add your social media links if you go into the Kingdom settings. So you go into uh, in here, then appearance, then Kingdom theme. Then a layout. And then under social setup, you can enter your Facebook. So you just copy and paste it, you know, facebook.com slash whatever you are. I'm not set mine up yet, but I will be doing that soon. And then, you know, all the rest are here as well. You just type in your links like that and Twitter. Obviously you need to make sure you get these profiles set up and then just copy and paste the links um, from the relevant social media networks. Okay, let's have a look at the, uh, the site now. I've done that. There we go, we've got them across the top there. It's looking nice, uh, looking good. So we're pretty much there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna install um, an SEO plugin and just very quickly do the basics on that. Be sure to check out the channel for a whole load more videos on SEO, on getting traffic and making money, and choosing an Amazon affiliate niche, all that sort of stuff. Um, I've already got some videos on the channel and I plan on creating uh, many more around uh, those sort of topics. So yeah, be sure to subscribe and all that business to make sure you don't miss out on that. But for now, I'm just gonna show you how to install uh, Yoast SEO and do some basic stuff just to make sure that the website is friendly and, and ready for, for Google and that when it comes to visit. So we're gonna go into the dashboard. We're gonna plugins, add new. Then in here I'm gonna type in Yoast SEO, which is my preferred favorite SEO plugin. There are others available, but uh, this one's pretty good. It's got a million active installs, so it must be doing something right. Let's click activate. Okay. You get a little thing up here, it says there's free issues concerning our SEO, we can have a look what they are. Okay. So we can we can do this stuff. First of all, it doesn't like our default WordPress tagline, so let's just fix that. Just click on that link. It's under site identity. And it's just, it wouldn't like that, just another WordPress site. Let's change it to the best boots hand picked from Amazon. There we go, so that's that fixed, let's close that. Perfect, the next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna set the page title. So at the moment, if we look at the site, if I just hover over this tab, you can see that the page title is, it's gonna load, well, I can see what it is, it's Boot Boutique, just another WordPress site. Now I've changed that strap line, that's probably changed. Um, oh, no, it's changed to homepage boot boutique, which is not ideal. Uh, obviously you wanna try and include some keywords within um, the page titles, because um, that's what Google's gonna come in and read. As I said, there's a lot more videos on my channel about SEO and I go into a lot more details. But yeah, take my word for it, you wanna include your keywords. So for example, here it's ladies boots or women's boots. If you're selling um, tools, it would be you know power tools, screwdrivers, whatever. Um, Hopefully Yoast has already adjusted the page titles on the products so that they make sense, which they do. So for example, 
this one is Morel, Silver, Sun, WTPF, Damon, whatever, whatever the boot is called, which is perfect for the products because that's what people are gonna be searching for. They're gonna be searching by product name. It's just gonna be the kind of homepage and other pages that you might want to adjust just to fit. So let's edit this page, which is the homepage. And Yoast has now added this uh, little box here, which allows us to adjust how the site is gonna appear on Google. So this little snippet is kind of an example of what it might look like if it comes up on Google. So let's change this bit, the title to the to ladies boots, no, women's boots. And picked, I'm gonna actually include some brands from UGG, Fly, London, Gibor, what are the other brands? Lucky brand, and more. That's good, and then this description here, we find the best women's boots just for you. From amazing boot brands, including, again, I'm trying to include keywords like boots and women's and stuff like that, um, because Google's gonna take the words we put in here as what the site and what the page is about. So including, uh, I'm gonna put Ugg Boots, because I think people actually search for Ugg Boots rather than Ugg Australia. Ugg Boots, Fly London Boots, or even maybe just Fly Boots. Gibor, and many more. Browse, I'm gonna add a call to action, because people are obviously gonna see this when they search Google and you wanna try and get them to click. So browse our amazing collection today. That looks good, happy with that. You can even see what it looks like on the mobile. Oh, he says, uh, don't look a lot different really. Perfect, in here you can set a focus keyword and that's gonna be, uh, then basically Yoast will go through your page and just see if you're kind of optimized. So uh, let's go for women's boots. And then if you go, once you put that in, you get this kind of score, I'm getting a good, happy with good, that'll do. We've got a little green light at the top there. So that's that done, that's um, that's Yoast. You're gonna wanna use this little panel whenever you're writing a blog post. Uh, and even when you you wanna maybe wanna adjust some categories or some products. Just a word on categories, I'll show you how to do that. So now we can see that that's changed, you see. Which is good. So yeah, say you wanted to optimize this category so that it was Fly London, so by default, it's coming up with Fly London Archives, because it's using a template. So you can either come in and change it by hand, which would be you'd click Edit Product Category, and you got the Yoast box again down here, so you can, um, yeah, just do it manually like this. So I'd go, uh, the focus keyword is Fly London Boots. Then obviously we come up here and change that to Fly London Boots, handpicked by Boot Boutique, <clears throat> or something like that. Then obviously your meta description here. Large range of Fly London Boots in a range of sizes. We stock the, we stock only the best Fly London boots available. Oh, hang on. That'll do something like that. Browse a collection of Fly today. So like that would be fine. So let's click update. So let's view the category. Now obviously that's quite long because you're gonna need to go through all the categories and if you've got a big site with lots of categories, yeah, that's gonna take some time. So I'm gonna show you a quick way um, how you can set a template um, so it kind of does it automatically. In terms of these categories and SEO, you're probably gonna to wanna to add a little bit more text. So to do that, if you click Edit Product Category, you can dump some text up here. So all about the brand, for example. 
Uh, fly London is a quality brand of uh, women's boots designed in London, UK. Obviously, you'd probably want to put a bit more than that, and you can obviously do your research by going over to the uh, whatever site of the manufacturer and you know just taking a bit from their site and adjusting it. Obviously, don't copy it straight off. You want to uh, rewrite it. Uh, sometimes it's a load of rubbish, though, isn't it? By the look of it. Uh, I'm gonna just copy that. I'm just gonna fill it out. Let's say you would want to rewrite that. Ideally, but I haven't got time right now. I'm going to do it <coughs> after I finish this video because I don't want this video to drag on and be a super long one like some of my videos are, where they go on for hours and hours and hours. So if we look at the category now, and you see we've got that bit of text up the top there. Um, so it's good for SEO uh, and good to get some words on it. So you, you're going to want to think of doing something like that. Now, if you do do that for all the categories, what you can do is then use that for your SEO meta description. Um, and let me just show you. So this one is Argo Australia Archives. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some, for some reason it doesn't like me editing that UG one, does it? <laughs> it's a little bit of a weird thing going on there. So let's do Gabor instead. And I'll, I'll find out what's going on with that a, a bit later. Gabor, Gabor, I don't know how to pronounce it. Gabor, 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 something like that. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do the SEO stuff, but I'm gonna add um, a description in here about Gabor Gabor. Again, I'm just gonna take it from, oh, from their site and then I'll, I'll rewrite it later. So there must be something on here about them, about us, there we go. Ugh, it's all rubbish again. They don't just tell me about the boots. Um, let me just do a search about Gabor boots. Uh, see if there's anything on here. I have to make something up. Never mind. I can do that. Let's go back. Gabor, make high quality. Women's boots using contemporary design and manufacturing techniques. <clears throat> you know, it's just <laughs> some rubbish. Uh, but again, you want to include keywords, so you might want to then drop some of the uh, leading styles in. You know, popular Gabor boots include the, and then I'm going to just quickly have a look. Um, at some Gabor boots. Let's go back to the site. What we got? Nicole, race and sound. That'll do. Include the sound. What was the other one? Race. Juanita. Nicole. Juanita. That will do. I just want to basically give, use this so I can show you how to set up a template using Yoast rather than going to each one and, and, and doing that. Although to be fair, if you are adding a description, then uh, then you might as well take a couple of minutes just to do this bit. But um, okay, if you so now you can see that it's automatically dropped the mess description in from that description, so that's fine. It's just this page title that needs to be a bit better. So if we want to adjust that to follow a nice template, if we go into SEO and then the dashboard. Uh, then if we go into general, oh, features. What you need to do is enable the advanced settings page. And then we get some more options down the side here. Let's go to titles and metas. And then if you go to post types, and find products. 
and it's actually the custom post type archives product section just here. I wanna remove the archive, the word archive. And then I'm gonna insert the word women's boots and click save changes. So what that should do is it should take the uh, the brand, so it will say Gabor women's boots or Australia women's boots and let's just see if that's worked. So currently looking at this uh, Gabor category and it's got the page title up there as Gabor archives. If I refresh it, it still says Gabor archives. Hang on a second, let's just refresh one more time. Maybe do a hard refresh. Nope, okay, let me just go back, see what's going on with that. Yeah, that should be the one. Let's just uh, see if there's something else I missed. Go to archives over here. Is it in here too? Nope. Taxonomies. Ah, it's this. It's gonna be this product categories one. That's weird. There's two sections. So again, I'm just gonna change this one to women's boots. It's probably best to do both because they they probably appear. Um, different places. There's a save box down here somewhere. There we go. So let's refresh. There we go. So now the page title is Gabor Women's Boots. So that's gonna to apply to all these categories. So it means if you haven't got time to go for each one, at least the page title is gonna be uh, to your liking. So let's go back to the homepage and admire our work as it were. I'm pretty happy with the way the site is right now. Uh, as I say, I'm gonna be doing other stuff to the site um, and I'll be creating more videos around that. I'll put together a playlist. Uh, and include this video. But yeah, be sure to check out the channel anyway, because there is already a lot of videos about Amazon affiliate marketing, which I did around my earlier sites, but it all still applies um, today anyway. Well done, you got to the end of the video. Congratulations, I hope your website is looking good and you're really proud of what you've managed to achieve. Now, I'm gonna be making a lot more videos around this website that we've just set up in terms of promotion, how much money I'm earning off it, and all sorts of things to do with that. So be sure to subscribe. Click there and you'll be subscribed and then you'll be the first to know when I upload those videos. I've also especially selected a uh, another video for you there from my channel. I'd imagine after doing all that work, you're probably gonna wanna go and have a lie down. So I hope your site works out. If you've got any questions, as I've said throughout the video, please let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. Until next time, bye for now.